Welcome to Web Handling. My name is Dave Roysom. I am super excited to continue Dave's defect with an outline how to troubleshoot a variety of web path control problems that include things like poor printer color to color registration, webs running off rollers, rough roll edges on winders, as well as many, many others. I know your time is precious, so let's get started. We will define path control problems as when the web CD position is not stable with time. As we will see, however, in many cases the web CD position is also not stable with MD position. True, your operator and your quality control department will not necessarily call these path control problems they are more likely to use rejectable defect names such as roll interweaving that we discussed in the last clip or rough roll edges on wound rolls as will be discussed in an upcoming clip or poor color to color registration on printers or many many other problems still these examples are all path control problems that are sometimes easier to diagnose as path control problems than by using a narrower specific defect focus. Problems like these can be difficult to troubleshoot in large part because as we've seen over and over again there is no single root cause. With path control, there's not even a single root cause mechanics. There are, in fact, many root cause mechanics for the web not being where you want, and each has several factors. That means we need to be knowledgeable about web handling, as well as being clever troubleshooters. That means we may need to forget what we know about our particular problem and perhaps start looking at it in a new way. That is, that our trouble is a path control problem at its roots. That means we need to be experts at not just our process or our machine but also expert on the half dozen mechanisms that can move a web sideways. One of the most important concepts in web handling is that every single roller steers the web path. The most common mechanism is the normal entry law that governs path when the web is in traction with a roll or roller. We cover that in great detail in our award-winning and trademark Web 101 school, so we do not need to repeat that here. Indeed, as we learned in Web 101, we can even predict how far the web moves. This is called the authority of roller misalignment. This jewel of web handling technology has been known and verified and used for a quarter of a century to specify roller design and maintenance. You can find a simple and free online calculator to do this. It is called the Wrinkle Predictor by Abbott App. Not only does it predict a very common type of wrinkle, a byproduct of this is to also predict path movements. Also, as we learned in Web 101, the most common cause of path upsets is not merely one component of roller misalignment, but rather a change of status of traction of the web on a specific roller. In short, a change of position both in time and space. 
It is the job. It is the assignment. And it is the goal of the good troubleshooter to know which specific roller moved the web the most and why. As we learned in Web 101, merely changing machine speed is one of the biggest challenges for web drives. One common outcome of a drive not keeping up is a path change. We teach how to troubleshoot not only why the drive is not keeping up, but also upon which roller this path misbehavior is happening and why. However, in-plane roller misalignment is not the only way to move a web sideways. As we learned in Web 101, roller diameter variation will also move the web, but it will do so differently in traction versus sliding. This is the mechanism by which many spreaders operate. While the diameter profile mechanism is important for some situations, the authority of diameter to move the web is pretty small. Think millimeters. However, nip pressure variation has an extremely large authority to move the web sideways. Think centimeters. If the nip pressure profile varies with time, then we will also have large path movement with time. Finally, as any printer will tell you, bagginess raises holy hell on registration. While the fact remains, the details are complicated and will not be covered here. You can find articles on the subject from the Roysom Library database and find the conference papers themselves of iWeb proceedings on the Share OK website. While there are few articles on path control per se, you can find a lot of work, nearly 200 publications on guides. In these articles, you will find the details of the mechanisms that we introduced here. Still, while reading and research are good for some people and for some purposes, that is not always the most efficient way to learn. There is simply no better way to learn about the concepts mentioned here and many other must-know topics than to take my award-winning and trademark Web 101 school that has been taken by 5,000 students just like you. That background, coupled with some clever troubleshooting that I also teach, should allow you to troubleshoot most any path control problem. No matter what your operators or your QA department or what your customers call them. However, if you are one that likes to read, there is no better source for path control topics than Chapter 8 of the 750-page must-have Web Handling Handbook. Thank you so very much for joining me in this Defect Solving and Defect Preventing series. Stay tuned for the next clip where we will discuss one of the most common path control problems in the web industries, rough wound roll edges. If you found anything interesting or useful here, please like and share and subscribe. Please also consider supporting the work of the channel using the Patreon link below. See you next time.